Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at Brave New Hollywood. We are going to talk Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. I'm here with Shira Dubrovner, the founder of the festival and programming director of the festival, Paul Sabrizi. Hi. So you guys, uh, first thing, tell, tell us about the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. What is it all about? Um, well, the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival started in 2000 and 15, we're entering our, um, is this, our, this is our sixth festival. Next year in 2021, uh, we'll have our seventh festival, seventh annual. Um, we started it in 2015 and wanted to really stay true to the independent film spirit. We uh, really try to um, bring filmmakers together, create an environment and community that supports and nurtures and mentors. Um, we found that quickly we did become that kind of a festival where relationships were starting, collaborations were starting, and we really are still staying true to the true independent spirit. We take a lot of time and put a lot of effort in going through all our submissions and finding these films that will represent the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival in the spirit that we started it in. Very good. Paul, I know that you go through a lot of film selecting uh, for the film festival. What stuck out and what kind of films do you, uh, did you select this year? Uh, well, you know, um, we had our, our submissions were up, which we we're really grateful for. And uh, we had we actually had a lot to choose from. And um, we ended up we ended up choosing, you know, we, we, we don't program by theme or anything. We're just we're trying to find the most exciting new voices. So um, so we were, we're able to actually find some some really great stuff. Um, you know, we have we have a documentary called Feather and Pine, um, which came from our submissions. It's that's really so beautiful. It kind of describes a um, um, this logging town that's kind of um, not in great shape, and 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 a young couple that's kind of deciding whether to stay there or leave. And, and actually, one of them wants to leave, wants wants to stay. But um, but it's just so beautifully shot and amazing sound design, and that was that was one that really jumped out. Um, we also have one from Singapore. Actually, it's shot in Japan, but the the filmmakers are from Singapore, and they're just uh, they're just so lovely. And they made this this really. It's almost like um, um, I don't want to. <laughs> it always sounds silly to compare something to the French New Wave, but it's got it definitely has that like a like a like an updated version of that spirit. Very very fun and abstract and and uh, and really smart brainy film at the same time called Re Revolution Laundrette that kind of takes you into the um, like the alternative side of, of, of what's going on in Tokyo and uh, and just yeah, those are just two examples of just a lot of stuff that we found directly from our submissions. I wanted to talk to you about something I've noticed at the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival when I've been attending is the fact that you always include one or two Iranian films in the programs. Uh, can you tell me what fascinates you about Iranian cinema and what it is that you see in Iranian films that helps you uh, select them for the festival? Um, I'd like to start and then I'll hand it over to you, Paul. Um, when I when we started the film festival, I brought on Paul because of his his longtime experience in programming in the independent film world. Um, he's been working for many bigger festivals than ours, and um, I was just jumping back into the independent film world. And I remember the first Iranian um, film that got submitted to us, and I was blown away. And um, I shortly after realized there were so many amazing, innovative filmmakers from Iran. And I don't know if it has to do with the suppression of the community, of the culture or what, but these voices um, were so different. And really, I felt so strongly that they really had to be heard and seen. Um, Paul, is there anything you want to add to that? Well, it's kind of a, it's an interesting situation because, uh, because of the, you know, there's an embargo on transferring money between the U.S. and Iran. So, so actually we, we allow um, Iranian filmmakers to submit to us for free. So we do get actually a lot of Iranian submissions, but yeah, like Shira said, there's, 
it is a really vibrant, and we haven't been able to have any of the Iranian filmmakers participate in the festival. So that's one of the things I'm really excited about for this year's festival, because it's online, we're gonna be able to, to actually talk to these filmmakers. And, uh, and uh, there's clearly there's a really vibrant scene there. And I think it comes out of the, um, the, the schools. And I think it's, I think there's a, I get the sense that there's some autonomy um, in the arts in Iran, even though it's, it's you know, obviously a somewhat um, um, totalitarian or, or, you know, like a repressive government. Um, the, the arts or film in, in specific seems to be kind of like uh, a world unto itself. And there's just amazing, it's, a, it's an amazing, it's a really vibrant scene, like, and, and cool and funny and um, irreverent and just like, not not what you would typically think of would be going on in Iran, but it's 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 one of the most one of the things I'm most excited about actually for this year's festival. Yeah, we actually have a documentary um, from Iran, a feature documentary that is so uh, timely right now. Paul, why don't you talk about it a little? Okay, yeah, it's called um, it's called um, Democracy on the Road of Save. And it's, it follows three local candidate, candidates in a, uh, in a local election in a city outside of Tehran. And it's, it was really funny to watch because it's just, you know, you think like, oh, it's a completely different culture, different, you know, different kind of, it's going to be something really exotic. And it's just, it's so much like what goes on anywhere in the world, the same kind of, you know, the little petty demagoguery and the promises that don't get cap and you're just like wow like the it kind of it, in a way it just um it's it's a great window into iran and kind of showing you how you know like they're trying just like anyone else to have a democratic system at least on the local level and but and it's just just like here or anywhere else this year's uh, festival is also virtual uh what were the pluses and the, like the pros and cons and the challenges of getting it together yeah, I, I remember when we had to make that decision, um, our community, because we are a small community, our numbers in comparison were quite high and they put us on the, the state watch list. Um, and the, the county is not letting any kind of gatherings happen, whether they're outside or in. And so I knew at that point, this was about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, I said, okay, we have to bite the bullet and do this virtually. And I remember being very upset and feeling like I was letting down all these filmmakers. And, and Paul was um, <laughs> in charge of calling all the filmmakers and breaking the news to them. And they were so gracious and so um, excited that we were still doing a festival in this time. And I think um, by having that reaction really uplifted my spirits because I was devastated. Um, it is difficult, you know, all these platforms are new and we're figuring it out just along with the rest of the world. But hopefully we have some good surprises for you. We have some great panels. We really uh, worked hard on making these panels um, relevant to what's happening now for our, fi our filmmakers. We have an interview with David Zucker from uh, the movie Airplane and the Naked Gun series. And I think we even have a disco party that we want to do on Saturday night for our filmmakers. We want to keep the engagement as if we were live, um, given the circumstances. I think it's gonna be a very fun festival. And I think another positive is that, that um, we'll be able to show the world what we do in Mount Flakes, which I think is, it's pretty unique. Um, we, we're, it, we really curate this festival very carefully. And we have, we, we have a lot of, Ex really exciting new voices that, that maybe aren't getting showcased anywhere else. In the past five years since you guys have been programming, putting the, the festival together, have you noticed a change in storytelling? What kind of stories are being told today? Um, I'm going to say I really have it. I think, I think um, you know, the, the, best, the best filmmakers are really just... Um, talking about their own lives and, and, and their, their own personal experience or their own vision, their own take on the world. And if anything, I, I, I've been programming for like 20 years now, actually. And uh, there's kind of, there's a breed of filmmaker that really looks for inspiration within and, uh, and, and really does that work of, of um, bringing, uh, 
uh, a genuine sensitivity to their filmmaking and, and a willingness to do things that are, you know, haven't been done before. And it's kind of, it's kind of a calling and it's, it's kind of a gift and it's, and there's kind of a fruit through line. It just, it, it goes, it goes on and on. And, uh, and so uh, every year we have just an amazing new crop of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously people are reacting to the circumstances in the world, but, but I think, I think uh, there's, there's kind of a, like a spirit that goes kind of like a baton that gets passed from you know, generation to generation of a willingness to, to really explore film as an art form. And that's kind of what we celebrate at, at Mammoth Flakes. I also I also feel that um, that the more the more individual and um, specifically um, uh, personal these storytellers are, the more universal they are, and um, and that's usually what we're looking for is and that's what excites us to see something that we've never seen before, but it's so universal because it's human, and um, and we've gotten very lucky in in finding the, those golden nuggets of storytellers. Excellent. I want to thank my guests, Shira and Paul from Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. This is one of my favorite film festivals and I recommend everyone to sign on and watch some great documentaries, shorts and narrative feature films. Mammoth Lakes Film Festival, which takes place September 16th until the 20th. Thank you.